magpuri sa Panginoon. Amen po ba? Amen. Can we give God another round of uh, ano, intense clap offering, please? Yes. It is, it is just but right for us to give Him all the glory, all the honor, all our best. Amen? Amen. Yung best na amen nga, can I hear that? Amen. amen. Yes. Let's sustain that energy hanggang tayo po ay matapos. Okay, yeah. Praise God. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Sister Sheila de Ario Mangila, and I am very privileged to stand in front of you today to share with you God's message for every one of us, including myself. So are we ready? Amen. Who here has gone, ano, who has already undergone a job interview? Yes, most of us, no? Yes, most of us has already gone through uh, job interviews. So we are already familiar with the question, what is your strength? Amen po ba? In fact, even sa school, I think, um, mga exit interviews, we have been... Uh, asked this a couple of times before our job interviews, really. We have been asked, what is your strength? What is your weakness? Tama ba? So I believe by now, we kind of know what our strength is. I said kind of, maybe not. But and most probably, when we go for job interviews, we go for the jobs that we think we are best suited for. Diba? Kasi we know we, we, we can deliver. Ako po, I am, um, I am a CPA for two reasons. When I was um, in high school, I really, really love math. Wow. That yun. <laughs> I really, really love math. And I was like, this is something na gusto ko i-pursue sa college. And so, it was a question of whether I go to engineering, because there's a lot of math there, and accountancy. But my second reason why I came to be an accountant is because I knew my weakness then. I really, really, really don't like chemistry. <laughs> so, I believe na believe po ako sa aking sister-in-law, chemical engineer. Yes, uh, <laughs> proud. <laughs> no, I'm. I, it's really no. I know my strength, and I kind of know my weakness as well. Because when my um, aunt uh, was sending me to um, college, she said na she would only support me sa isang course. So hindi pwedeng bumagsak, hindi pwedeng magshift. So I knew I had to make up my mind. So that's why I praise and thank God He led me to become an accountant. Yun. Eh, bakit ko naman tinanong, uh, what are your strengths? Remember last week, Pastor Jonas talked us about um, having better than life. And one of the key points was to walk with a purpose. Eh, ano yung purpose natin? Alam ba natin? Di ba? Which leads me to my topic today. with a question that I hope we keep in mind through the entire message. My question is, what am I called for? Our anchor verse is from Exodus 35, 31. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. Let's please join me in prayer. Father God, I praise and I thank you and I glorify you, Panginoon. Salamat, Lord God, for your spirit that is here right now with all of us, Father. Father, today, Lord, as I speak, Lord God, I pray that you alone will be magnified, O God, that your words alone, Panginoon, will be spoken today, Lord God, that as I decrease, O God, that you, you hide me behind your cross, O God. Holy Spirit, take full control. 
And I pray, oh God, for every heart and every ears that are here right now. I pray that you open them, oh God. Open them up to hear every word that you have for us, Lord God. And may it be so absorbed in their hearts that it may take root and bear fruit in each of our lives. We give you glory, oh God. We give you honor and as we enthrone you today, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Our scripture reading is Ayo ko i-recognize ng iPad ko. <laughs> there. Our scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 35 verse 30 to 36 chapter 7. Uh, sorry, verse 7. Allow me to read it to you. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he has given both him and, and Oholiab, son of Ash Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with the skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So a little background, wh why is there, ano, ano ba tong ginagawa nila? No? The background here is that God, this is already after God has given Moses the Ten Commandments. And he has to, commanded Moses to build a tabernacle. A tabernacle is a place of worship and a place of dwelling for God. And God has very specific instructions, very Um, specific in all the details na gagawin po sa tabernacle. Everything was very specific in terms of what cloth is to be used, what kind of um, carvings or what kind of um, artistic designs, what kind of yarn will be used. What diba? It's, God was very specific. And one of the people that he called was Bezalel. In fact, in verse Uh, in chapter 30, God said to Moses, I have chosen Bezalel. So yun po yung ating background. That's why there's all this work that's being done. And Moses called all the Israelites and asked them to contribute what they could from their hearts voluntarily to the building of the tabernacle. So let's continue. Verse 36. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work and the constructing and of the constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings of the Israelites. Yun po yung mga construction materials, mga raw materials, whatever they could contribute for the building of the, tab of the tabernacle. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. And then, yung mga workers, for a day, they stopped working. They went to Moses and they said, The people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord has commanded to be done. And so Moses gave an order and sent his word throughout the camp and said, No man or woman is to make anything else in the offering of this for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from being more because they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Wow. Amen. Hindi ba tayo na amazed? There has been an overflow of the contributions of everyone out of the uh, out of their ano from their hearts. Amen. 
So sino po sa inyo, who here knows Bezalel? You know, I'll be honest. Before God impressed this message to me, I have probably already gone through it, read through it, and I couldn't remember who he was. Because he isn't as famous as Moses, as Aaron, as Peter, as Paul, as John, or all the significant people of the Bible that we know and remember. Diba? But... What amazed me is that in chapter 30, uh, in chapter 31, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel. He has chosen Bezalel by name. Tayo, sino ba siya? But God knew that there was work to be done, he knew he has equipped someone and he has chosen him by name. He could have asked, Moses, who do you think would be best suited for the job? Just call him and then assign him to do all the work. No, God chose him by name. Amen? And as it is for each and every one of us, all of us, has been chosen by name, by God. Hindi lang tayo, na-invite kasi tayo ng friend natin, kaya napasama tayo sa church na yun. No. Yes, you may be part of a church, but God knows you personally and chose you and called you personally by name. Unfortunately, sometimes we are not doing what we are called for. What are the things that are hindering us from using our gifts to pursue our calling? I know marami pong makaka-relate. Nababasa ba? Yeah. Feeling inadequate or incompetent. Familiar? So familiar. Say, um, I don't think I can do that. Oh, I can maybe do it, but I'm not really good at that. I, I, I let Pas Junas do all the talking. I let Pas Rossi do all the ushering. Uh, si, si Pas Sina bahala sa praise and worship. I'll, I'm good. I'll just sit here. I'll worship God anyway. I'm attending church. I'll be here safe, saved, and seated. I'll be, I'm fine. Incompetent. Um, maybe I'll just make a fool out of myself. Even Moses said to God three times, Lord, I have faltering lips. So, nakaka-relate po pati si Moses. Lord, paano, how will I do this? Because I have faltering lips. So, he kind of doubted also his calling. Sounds familiar. Am I really made for this? Is this what I was, am I really supposed to do? But God said, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, the Lord said to Moses, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who, who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it, I, is it not I, the Lord? Now I gave you a mouth to speak. Go. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Amen. So whenever we feel inadequate, whenever we doubt whether we are actually doing what we are called to do, God said, I will help you. Because just as he was with Moses, he would also be with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Another thing that hinders us from our calling is 
feeling undeserving, feeling unworthy. Why? Because of our past sins, because of the life we had, because of what the people say we are, because of what we think people think about us. Oh, I've been a sinner. I've been so mataray. I've been so masungit. I've not been welcoming people in my lives. I've been so, I, I've, been, I've enjoyed the world so much, so much so that I cannot stand in front or I cannot face the people of God. I cannot even face God. So how can I, how can I say that I was called by God? But Romans 5, 8 says, this is how God shows his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So even if we feel unworthy, invaluable, God is saying, you are so valued. I valued you with my life. Amen. Amen. You feel so small, but I am your God. I am so big. I got you. These are the things that hinders us from our calling. And these are the lies that the enemy throws at us every single day of our lives. And what happens if we listen to these lies? We run away from our calling. We turn our back from what God is saying because we couldn't stand it. Where in fact, God wants us, wants us to walk into our calling. And how do we walk into our calling? Allow me to use the acrostic walk. Yeah. First, before we walk into our calling, we should know, what am I called for? Seeking God's given gifts for us. In 1 Peter chapter, 10 to 11, uh, chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, God has given each of you a gift from his variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you, do you have this gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and the energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. God has given each of us a gift. A unique gift. Naniniwala po ba tayo doon? Amen? We, each of us has been given a gift, but we have to use it. We have to use it as good stewards of, of God. Remember the, the parable of the talents where the one person was given uh, one, he, he, he hid it, kept it so that he could present it later on. So it did not grow. It wasn't shared to anyone. And God wasn't pleased. So God is giving each of us a gift for a reason. It is not to be kept. It is not to be um, shut down. Why? Because we have to be good stewards of God's gracious gifts. And in doing so, what does it say? It says, then everything that you do will give Glory to God. So do we want to glorify God in whatever we do? You know, God is actually gracious. Eh? He already gave the gift for us to use. He's not saying, Sige nga, gawin. He's not gi making, He did not make us empty-handed. And how do we know what we are called for? Let us, as my question earlier, kanina, naaalala nyo pa ba? Yung what are your strengths? 
for us to know what we are called for, one um, starting point is to know ourselves, our strengths, our passion. What are we passionate about? What are we good at? You can look at yourself, look at your hands. What could my hands do that I could serve God? What could my hands do? Maybe you're good at welcoming people. Diba? We, you could be part of the ushering team. Maybe your hands are good at reaching other people, bringing them to church. Maybe you were called to be an evangelist. And you know what? I praise and thank God for the life of Pastora Marlin. Nanay Marlin, as we fondly call her, um, she is uh, one of our pastors uh, in training, and she is in the Philippines. And she is one, I think one or the first really, who welcomed me at the door of um, the cinema in Abu Dhabi. She was one, one of the, the, I think she was the first one, because I really recalled her very much. And even when it was the first time of Mags, my husband, she didn't po hinag welcome. And we both have the same feeling that when she welcomed us, that warm embrace, the warmth that she gave when we, she embraced us, we really felt the love of God. I know those who know her could, be, could relate. Yes. Amen? Iba, iba yung hug pa lang niya. Minsan nga, you're just approaching her and you see her smile and you already feel, this person loves me. And she doesn't even know me. And then you come to know, oh, it's because she loves God so much, it overflows through her. Amen? So what could my hands do? Maybe you're good at helping others. Diba? Ang sabi nga sa verse kanina, oh, if you're good at helping others, then do so with the strength and the energy that God will supply you with. Look at your lips. Pouty lips ba yan? <laughs> are you good in speaking? Maybe you are called to be an MC or maybe a preacher of God's word. Or maybe you're good in singing. You could worship. You could be part of the worship team. You could sing praises to God. And you could bring other people into praising God. What else could you use your lips for? Maybe you're good in encouraging people. Diba si Barnabas? That was his calling to, to be an encourager. And I, um, there's one sister that I have in Abu Dhabi, CKM. And really, I tell her, she is my great encourager. Because every time I feel down, somehow she would sense it. And then she would send me a message, how are you? I'm praying for you. And maybe that is also our calling. Your ears, what could your ears do? Maybe you are a good listener. A lot of us need a good listener. We need someone that would listen rather than talk back. Maybe you have ears for music. Diba? You could be used, again, for our worship team or sa yung ginagawa ni PJ, ni Pas J, yung, di ko alam ang tawag dun, Pas. Sa mixer. <laughs> Look at yourself. My feet, what are my feet for? What can I do best with my feet? Maybe I could dance. I could dance for God. Or maybe God is sending my feet to go the distance to reach and be a missionary. Abante, yes. What else do we have that we could use for God? Our eyes. Maybe our eyes are, oh no, we're good at arts. Or photography, like si Direk. Diba? Maybe you can be part of the media team. Lakas nung aim, yes, ni Pas Jonas doon. Amen? Yes, though, <laughs> those who feel it in their hearts that they could help in the in the media team, i-approach po natin si Pas Jonas. 
Oh, lakas ng yes niya doon. <laughs> no, it's it's a starting point for us to know our calling is to know what we are good at, what we are passionate about. And it is really looking at ourselves first. What can I do? And what could I give? And then we seek God's word. We seek God's confirmation. Lord, ano ba dapat kong gawin? And we know God's word is very much alive. It will speak to us. When we will be amazed na minsan napaka-clear ng message. Lord, ako ba talaga? Sa akin ba talaga to? And it's not, we know it's not impossible for God to speak to us. Even not in His words, it could be in His still small voice. Let us be sensitive of what is God telling us to do. Another is to listen to our leaders and pastors because they could also be our confirmation. Because they are anointed. God speaks to them. So pag sinabi ni pastor, alam mo, I feel na you are being called by God to, ano, to be part of the worship team, to sing for God. Yung story ni Bezalel is one example of God giving us, calling a person with specific instructions and human responsibility to answer the call. So there is a calling and it is for us to answer the call. Part of that is when our leaders tells us. I have been, uh, the first, my first ministry was dance. Sa, Abu da- sa ACCI Abu Dhabi po. And then I was assigned to be an MC. And after I was assigned to be an MC, Papi j- added me in to the preach training. And I was like, hmm, dapat pala di na lang ako nag-MC. <laughs> But, I am amazed and really humbled by that confirmation by God. Because, Before Papi told me about that assignment, God was already telling me that He will speak for me. So sometimes we really, well not sometimes, we always have to listen to our leaders and our pastors. All of us have a unique calling. Wala pong small or big calling. We could be called to stand in front. We could be called to be behind the scenes or even far from the actual scene. Maybe you're called to be a prayer warrior. So wala pong small and big calling. When they were building the tabernacle, they God assigned Bezalel because he had skills. E in that, si Moses nga, bakit di na lang si Moses ang ang maging punong abala ng lahat, di ba? There is no big and small calling. Next, for us to walk into our calling, we should allow the Holy Spirit to empower us. In verse 31, it said, And He has filled them with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. God equips us. Siya na nga yung nag-give nung gift. But isn't God so gracious that He fills us with the Holy Spirit and gives us wisdom kung paano gamitin yung gifts na yun? And when we allow the Holy Spirit to empower, He enriches that gift. We allow the Holy Spirit to empower us only if we serve with surrendered lives. Baka kasi, I always remember this from when we were training for preaching with Pastor Josh. She always, uh, she, ha- she mentioned this in one of her practices and I never forgot it. 
she said that there is a very thin line between glorifying yourself and glorifying God. And since we are working in our area of strength, tendency is, I can do this. I know how to do this. I can do this. But to allow to live surrendered lives, to serve with surrendered lives, it is not us having self-confidence but being God-dependent. And being God-dependent is not a sign of weakness. In fact, He empowers us with His Holy Spirit. He would flourish the skills even more that He has given us. So, and part of the, sorry, part of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is for us to share it with others, to teach it to others. Diba? Kanina sa, scri sa scripture natin, he said, and he gave Bezalel and Oholiab the ability to teach others. And when we exercise our calling, we use it, we allow God to use us, we allow His Spirit to uh, empower us, we could use it to share it to other people. Maybe to teach other people on how also they could use the skills, the gifts that has been given to them by God. And that is how, it is one way of how we could walk into our calling. Amen po ba? Gising pa po ba tayo? Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Next. L is to live a life worthy of my calling. As I said earlier, you know, every day, the enemy throws a lot of flies to our faces. And I am not an exception to that. We, even when we are already doing our calling, walking in our calling, the enemy all the more will throw those lies to us. And one thing that he always throws at me is that, am I really made for this? There was a time where I was given uh, preaching, ni papi, yung about the parable <laughs> of uh, the four types of soils. And I was really battling very hard because I was so busy at work. And I feel na I wa I, parang I'm not being given enough time to, to prepare for God's message. I feel like, I feel unworthy. I feel like, dapat ba talaga ginagawa ko to? And I almost sent a message to Papi and said, Papi, baka pwede namang ikaw. And actually, as I said, the enemy all the more throws a lot of lies at you when you're walking in your calling because during that time as well, Calix was in the hospital. Or, well, we were bringing him on and off the hospital. So I was asking, Lord, should I really be doing this? Am I really made for this? But you know what? Romans 11:29 For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. He does not withdraw what he has given nor he changes his mind about those to whom he gives his grace to or who he sends for his call. So if you were called where in fact you are called hindi po binabawi ni Lord yun. It's irrevocable. And one confirmation that God gave me to really live a life worthy of this calling that He gave me. 
to really be faithful in this calling, to really walk this calling ng asking Him as the only source of my wisdom, as my strength. It's because when I was saying that, Lord, should I be doing this? In Ephesians, sorry, in sec, ti, well, <laughs> First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 to 14, this was God's confirmation to me. He said, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of the scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given to you through the prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Sabi ko, Lord. Grabe ka naman. You know, I was really humbled. I was really humbled and encouraged to really walk this calling faithfully with humility. Because I know God is enabling me to do so. So you see, when I said, God really confirms through His Word. This was the clear confirmation of God to me on what my calling was. In Ephesians, Paul's encouragement, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, Bearing one another in love. For us to live a life worthy of calling, we should use these gifts that has been entrusted to us with humility. With humility. It is not, it shouldn't be a source of pride. My pastor na ako. Hindi ako basta basta dapat ginaganya ng member doesn't sound right. <laughs> God is our perfect example of humility and He wants us to use our gift and not neglect, neglect your gift, but use it with humility and gentleness and patience and love. Because when we live our calling, we are not just saying, Lord, I love you. And because you said so, I will do so. But because I want others to also experience your kind of love, I will use my gift so that your message will reach those who need you. Sabi ko nga, not everyone is, to, is called to stand in front. But every calling that each of us have Make up. Diba? It builds the church. It contributes to the mission. It completes God's purpose for us. So each of us is a piece of a puzzle. So don't, uh, don't feel that you are not fit for this because you have a specific fit in the whole puzzle. Amen po ba? Naniniwala po ba tayo doon? Praise the Lord. Lastly, walking into our calling is for us to know that where God calls us, He will provide. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where He calls, He will provide. Provide. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, they received from Moses all the offerings that the Israelites had brought, and they stopped it because there was more than enough. Morning after morning, someone was bringing 
And Bezalel was only called to do what he had to do. He, he didn't have to worry on how he will be able to do what he had to do because God was already sending all the raw materials, all the things that had to be used to fulfill what he had to be, do, uh, to be doing. Amen po ba? You know, <laughs> and you know, this is also a reminder for me. When I was preparing for this word, it was also a rebuke to me. Na because I am a very logical, very practical person, and I have been so used to uh, thinking on how I could do it myself, on relying on what I have, when I when when um, Mags and I were planning, um, words and praying, Lord, where will you send us? But at the back of it, we were like, I, sa ganito na lang kasi baka we still need to save for it. We'll need we still need to prepare for it. But when God showed me this um, scripture. That was the specific thought that came to my mind. He's asking me to be ready whenever to remember that because where he will call us, he will provide. You know, when God called um, Mags and I to stay in Dubai, because we used to attend um, in ACCI, Abu Dhabi, while we lived in Dubai, when God gave us the specific instruction to stay in the city where we are, He did not just provide financially. In fact, He has enriched the gifts that He has given us. I praise and thank God na nakikita ko pong nagag... <laughs> nakikita ko pong nagagamit yung asawa ko. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, from the media team then, now I see how he is being used by God in praise and worship. <laughs> and more than all the skills that he has been giving us, one thing we never thought we needed, but he provided really was the family. It is really the family. And it was through the pandemic that this, the love of this family that we have in ACCI was magnified sa aming pong buhay. So, it is one of our spiritual markers that where He will send us, He will provide. And I will always uh, remember yung story ni Mami Shi and ni Papi from when their family were having their own um, life lesson meeting in their small flats to setting up chairs, expecting um, as if people will come, expecting that God will fill those places from that flat to where we are right now. Look around you. I praise and thank God. And one of the encouragement, really, I always uh, message Pastora Ems. Um, for those who doesn't know her, she's one of our um, pastors, and she is now in ACCI US. Well, she went to the US, and because through her, through her faithfulness and obedience, despite of all the challenges, whether it be work, their health, financially, because of their obedience, God provided more than they could imagine. Now we have ACCI US. <laughs> so there are a lot of proof that where God He where God sends us, He will provide. And for us to walk our calling, we have to know that. We have to remember that will give us that confidence in God. Now, okay, yes. I am called, 
and I can walk this calling, I can use this calling, and I need not worry of the things that is needed because he will provide. Let me close with this. Three very short phrases, and I hope we remember this. God chose us by name. Can you say that to yourself? God chose me by name. Yes. Can you say your name? Sheila, God chose you by name. And God equips who he chooses. Lastly, where God calls, he provides. Our challenge, not just for today, but every day really, is to know what are we called for. Let us seek out our calling. We are all chosen and called for a purpose. So let us use our God-given gifts as good stewards of God, glorifying Him. And let us walk into our calling with full dependence on and confidence in God. Our memory verse is from Exodus 35, 31. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kind of skills. I praise and thank God, and I want to give glory to him alone. <laughs>